Hello, my name is Roland Reyer. I'm a technical specialist at Autodesk Media Entertainment in Europe. In this short presentation, I'd like to show you a Bifrost node that I made, a Bifrost compound, which is called Compare Geometries, which can be used to compare two geometries to see where and how much they differ from each other. I've loaded this model here, which is a high resolution version of the Witcher. I'll turn off the hair here, we don't need that for now, and maybe also even the eyes and the uh, inner of the, of the model. And what I want to do now is to duplicate this model, maybe put it on a separate layer, and then hide the original layer. And then I want to reduce the numbers, numbers of polygons of this model. So the polygon reduce comes up with this little you know, in view editor and I can now dial up the percentage. So currently it's displayed as a smooth mesh preview and we can hit one to just show it as a polygon object and I start to reduce more and more and more. And actually, you know, I want to go all the way up and reduce 95% of the polygons. So now this model is not so bad. I mean, I can still see this is the Witcher, the texture still sits okay. But when I turn back on the, the original mesh, you see there are differences between the two models. But even, you know, when I turn them both on and I select the second one, or maybe the first one, you can see there are differences, but it's not a clear image of, you know, what's what's happening because when I go closer with my camera, you know, this this changes here though, or the intersecting geometry changes a little bit. It would be nice to have something that simply colors my geometry and shows me how much, you know, how much they differ from each other and where I I have to do something about it and what I can do. So what I did was to create a compound in Bifrost 2.0 that shows me exactly that. And this works so. In my Bifrost shelf, I'll open the Bifrost node editor and maybe I'll, you know, collapse the graph editor and also well, I need this one here for now. So, and I'll create a new graph here. I don't need this input node since I'm going to create new input nodes from the geometry. And then I drag in the original geometry, you know, that's the high resolution version, and maybe I can name it immediately, high res model or so. And I take the low resolution version, that's the reduced model, and call it low res model or something like that, just to make sure that I, you know, know which, which one is which. And then here in the graph, I'll hit the tab key to start to uh, create new nodes. You've seen I've done that before. This is the history here. You, to find a node, you can, of course, go into these pull down or these pop up menus here and find the node that you are looking for. But you can also start typing the name and then we'll make suggestions and you can pick pick it from these suggestions. Now, this is the node that I created. So I created a completely new thing. And inside there's a network of other nodes that does actually the function that I want. So this works so that I plug in the low resolution model into the geo source and the high resolution model into geo destination. Destination means that this will receive colors. So I'm creating colors on the, on the vertices of the high resolution model because I have a higher resolution there. I would see more colors. If I use the low res model, you see, you know, I just reduced the vertices so I can't have the color anymore or there's not much information there anymore. Okay, so, <clears throat> and then here in ge compare geometry, I need to set some values. I'm, I'm going to set this to one here because I simply don't know what the range would be. And then I say, okay, for the color where the two models are similar, I use a green color and where they are not similar, I use a red color. Okay. And then I plug this into the output. Now look here over in the outliner, you will see that as soon as I can make this connection now, there's a new model appearing. This BIF object is the output of that graph. Let's move that over here and deselect it. You see that's a green guy or the green geometry. That green comes from my input that I did here. 
that's this green. Just my range is too big, so let's lower it to 0 0.5 maybe. That's still too big. 0 0.2, ah, still too big, and 0 0.1 maybe. So that's one millimeter actually. So these, this is the difference of the two models. You know, one millimeter means red, completely red already, one millimeter and above. And we see, you know, when we look at the reduced model, we see some geometry here around the lips, for example. We, we need to work on that. But, you know, we want to have a close look at this, at this coloring here. So what I could do, for example, is to say, I'll select my geometry and then I'll have a look at the lips, for example. So here we have red spots on the lips. And that is because, you know, when we, let me select this facet here and hit a frame, frame selection. So you see now here is, here's a, here's a really bad situation for the lip in this, in this point here. And also I would say in this one here, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that these two red spots, so what I could do here, for example, is to go into the modeling toolkit and use the multi-cut and simply say, okay, I'm going to cut from here over to here, over to here to, you know, track the shape of the lip a little bit and then over to here and hit enter to confirm. And then I'll use the move tool and pick vertices and take these two vertices and I can move them in and out by holding the control key and using the middle mouse button. And then let's have a look at the red spots here. So I hold the control key, middle mouse button, and then ah, you see that's when we move the vertices in and out, we can, you know, make this a little bit more or less red to make sure, you know, the shape is more similar and does not change too drastically. So that's how you would change this geometry and correct it. Um, but let's have a look at the graph itself. So I'm going to collapse the toolkit here and open the Bifrost graph editor again. And it's very handy to have these tabs here by clicking once on the tabs, it's going to collapse all the way and, you know, settle down with the other ones here so that you can just unfold what you, what you really need. So let's have a look at this compare geometry when I double click on it. We dive into the whole thing here. I have to move this one over here. That's the output node that actually belongs here. So this is my whole graph. Now let's um, load another geometry and have a look or, you know, let me explain you how the graph works. So this is now a simplified version of our situation. We have a high resolution model. That's our destination. That's the one that receives colors. And this is the low resolution version. That's the poly reduced version of the head. And let's assume these two models are close together. I've put them a little bit apart so that we can better see. But, you know, this stands for the difference in the geometry, this gap between the two objects. So let's now say we, uh, we have one point on the surface of our high resolution model. That's this one over here. And let's dive into, into the graph. Actually, I have to first explain how that whole thing starts. This one node here, that's an input node. And the values that you see here are exactly the values that, you know, lead into the node. So it could be either values that you set manually or it could be a connection. But all of these values appear inside the compound as this input node, and you can use it to connect it to and use these values or use these geometries. Now, I was talking about the high resolution geometry here. And what we do with a high resolution geometry, that's the destination geometry. I'll I feed it into this node here, which extracts the positions of all points, the position of all vertices. And let's say, let's start with this one that's marked in yellow here. So what comes out here as green lines is an array of positions. So all of the vertices in one row, in a specific row, because we want to know, you know, we, we want to know which vertices we are working on <clears throat> to later recombine the whole thing. So that's the destination geometry. Now I'm feeding all of these points into this next node here, get closest locations. And this compares my positions that are just extracted with 
my source geometry, which is the low resolution version. So get closest locations cre actually creates a point or, you know, finds the point that is closest to this yellow one here on the other surface, which would be this one here in this case. And you see, it's not a vertex, it's not even on a line. It's just somewhere in the middle of, a, of the surface. Now, such a surface location is not an XYZ position that I can use directly. And that's why I'm doing this one here. I have to I have to take this location that I found, the yellow dot here, and feed it into this next node, the sample property, which takes the same geometry again and compares this location and, and spits out an actual XYZ position. And this actual XYZ position, I can compare with the original XYZ and I not only compare it, I subtract the two. And what happens when I subtract these two points is that, let's go a little bit closer here, is that it creates a vector, a vector that goes from one of these points to the other point. That's this arrow here. And it doesn't matter in which direction this, this arrow points, we can calculate the length of this vector with this node. It's a very simple calculation, actually. And then clamp the length to, you know, between a min and a max value. The min value in this case is just zero, and the max value is the range that I entered, right? So when we say anything above one centimeter or one millimeter or so, that would be the max range here. And we clamp it to that and then divide the result to the max. So when it's max, then it would be a one that comes out of this division here. And when it's smaller, then so this value will go from zero to one. And this value I will then use with these two colors that are input into the compound and interpolate between these two colors, which is very cool. And then comes out a vector again, three colors, RGB, and I add a fourth value, which is the transparency, the alpha value. And I can that then set this to the destination geometry. That's the destination geometry that comes here. And I set the data and I can tell this node which data I want to set. It's the color in this case of my high resolution geometry vertices. So I'm setting vertex colors basically. So that's the whole explanation of this graph here, which is very cool because it's, you know, it's packed up. You can now use it just so you don't have to understand it. You don't need to be able to do it by yourself. You can just use this node, install your node on in your Maya account or in your own account on your computer. And from then on, you can use this compare geometry to com compare two geometries. So I hope you find this easy to understand and useful. And here's a link to the download page. It's on area.autodesk.com. And there in the download section, you will find a download for this compound and also instructions how to install it on your local computer.